lisp and again this is something similar to the vxlan that is known as the location id separation protocol so first we have to understand the history why basically we are going to use this is the million dollar question if everything is working fine we are running the bgp we are running the like uh, you know uh, ejrp right ejrp we are running the ospf rip whatever we have in the static then why basically this another routing protocol or like separation protocols similar to the routing protocol used here that is known as the less location id separation protocol so this is the first question you should come in your mind right so the idea was you just think about the bgp you just think about the bgp bgp routing domains i mean the internet routings are day by day increasing day by day increasing and trust me right now it's having almost 1 million route right 1 million routes we have almost 10 lakhs right so 10 lakhs route we have for the internet based routing and just think about the routers who is just facing to the isp and they just they have to build the communication from one location to another location they all need to carry all this 10 lakhs lakhs route from this router to this router this router this router this router this router and also if you are the customer you connected with this your p to c and you want to get the bgp configuration between them and you want to access the internet then you also need to get the 10 lakh route in your routing domain so the moment you start doing this the moment you start doing this these are the like if low end routers right they probably not able to process this 10 lakh routes at one go so your perform performance of the routers right performance of routers will be degraded similar is going to be the isp it is going to be degraded it is going to be degraded so there is a concept why should i just go and carry these all routes why should i carry okay i can do something i can do something where i can just you know not going to carry these all routes in my routing domain but i can do something by using this basic routing connectivity i can build something let's suppose these are the two sites available here and they are having the router i can do something the tunneling between these two sites and based on tunneling i can exchange my routing for all internet base or intranet base through that tunnels so the purpose of the routing is going to be solved i don't need all internet routing to just communicate my one location to another location or go to the internet and similarly i can build my tunnels over that i can transfer my traffic so this is where lisp is going to come in a picture so scale internet routing tables it is going to scale your internet routing table means your large routing table is going to be scaled it is going to minimize it is going to build the over top virtualization tunnels based on the lips and it is going to help with the multi homing mobility and the ipv migration also so we'll discuss each and each and everything step by step so first you understand what is the location id separation protocol and how it is going to work so just think this is your two locations this is your two locations and you want to communicate with these two locations so this is the one thing you just have to get the isp network and you just take the mpls or internet circuit and then by using them you can just communicate this this is the one way solutions you can just build the mpls internet whatever you want and just make the communication so this is the easiest way but if i want to not receive each and every routing informations from the internet and i want to build my something that is known as the overlay so i can use the lisp technology by using the lisp technology i can build my tunnels so how it is going to build so let's suppose you want to use the lisp technology so you just have to memorize you just have to understand the concept of this all you know five parameters so we having the end point id 
we having the routing locator, we having the map resolver, we having the map server, we having the ingress tunnel routers, we having the egress tunnel routers, right? So what is the egress tunnel router? What is the egress ingress tunnel routers? So first you understand ingress tunnel routers. That means if I'm talking the ingress tunnel router where my packet is going to land and it is going to encapsulated in the list, you know, packet. So the packet where the tunnel is going to start doing the encapsulation based on the source and destination IP address. So see, this is the source IP address and it want to talk to this destination with the, some data. So this is the original packet. So the moment you encapsulated this packet with the, your additional header with the additional source destination and the list header, this has become the ITR, right? So this is something ingress tunnel router, right? Next one is the ATR. So the router who is going to receive the packet and further they will decapsulate it, right? The further they are going to decapsulate it, right? That is known as the ETR, okay? So these two things are very much clear. So you just have to know. Now we having another two parameters that is the EID and the routing locators. So what is the EID, endpoint ID, okay? So if I talk about the endpoint ID, okay? So let me just clear here. So endpoint ID is something, let's just suppose this is my, you know, one of the sites, list site one, right? And this is my list site two. So the machine IP address, whatever the actual machine IP address, right? We have whatever the actual machine IP address I have, that is actual endpoint ID or subnet, you can say. So IP ID, you can just think about the same. And on which public IP it is going to be mapped to just reach to destination. So corresponding to this, if you think about this site for you, you don't know for this, but you know the R lock for this EID, you know the R lock, R lock is the routing locator. <clears throat> so you want to go on this particular destination. So this is your endpoint ID. This is a network that is a, acting as the endpoint ID. But corresponding to this endpoint ID, you cannot go in the private network directly over the internet. So you just have to go the R lock. And this R lock is going to help further to just divert this traffic to the your actual destination. So the endpoint ID is the actual your end networks where your LAN subnet is going to reside. And your R lock is actually the mapping and it is going to tell your private subnet informations. Okay. So this is your EID and the R lock. And what is a map resolver and map server? So in Lisp network, one router is going to act as a map resolver and map server. And this having a responsibility to map all private and public IP address information in their record. So basically, whenever anyone is going to communicate, they will just first talk to the, like any list packet is going to communicate and build the tunnel. They first go to the MS and MR. MR will check the record and they will just tell which site and which R lock you just have to reach. So corresponding to private subnet, you just having the R lock manipulated here. So this is how it is going to be happen. Any question in this particular, in these terms we have? Anyone? In terms, I don't have question, but what uh, in that previous traditional thing, all the routes, millions of routes uh, are in the router, but here only uh, that route records in MSMR, are you saying that or where it's gone, all of that million routes of BGP? It should be so somewhere, right? Somewhere you are just getting the basic internet connectivity. You just don't need to get the all, like uh, every router information, right? You just have to get the information from the, you know, uh, internet to just make the reachability. So just, you have to make sure, let me just tell these two address, oh, where is my mouse? Yeah, these two address, this is a public IP address. See, this is a public, this is a public. You just make the reachable through the internet. If you're able to ping from here to here, here the public, like with IP sec tunnel. So you mm -hmm. don't need the millions of route. You just, you can do via the static routing and rest 
by the help of the lisp you can do the rest of the communication you can do the rest of the communication by the help okay, of the so so they have uh, invented kind of different technology this is it is yes. not uh, related this to is, bgp yeah this is something different technology we can say so let me just you know i thought some... it's uh, over the bgp or some kind of similar uh, no, no, no no maybe I... maybe some routes in on the single kind of uh, network or maybe in the router and other routers are just uh, talking like uh, with say, uh, yeah. single ip address so see here you can see these are the two sites you can see here let me you can mm -hmm. you can see here this is a site right so routing source destination data this is same thing so this router is going to get you want to get this destination so a corresponding to this destination they create the one r lock r lock is your wan ip address right and where it is going to map all information that is going to map all in the mapping database that is a lisp ms on mr servers and they are the brain you can think about it and they are going to provide the resolving for this destination ip address whatever you have okay so based on this destination resolving they will build the lisp packet the first you can reach the gateway then gateway router will connect to the your brain that is ms and mr right i can i can relate to this like a v uh, v manager or that yes, yes. Technology. exactly same exactly same likewise the your v smart is the like something the brain of the routing just yes. think ms and mr is the brain of the routing table and they also yeah. tell the t locks and next stop they also doing the same thing Okay. same thing yeah yeah there also t log the concept here r log is okay yes r log is a concept so same thing is going to happen and they are just based on that they are just going to build that all thing and they are going to communicate so this is the r log space got it so this is all and one more important point let's just suppose you having some non you know uh, lisp site right let's just suppose the site where in behind uh in the network this is these, these are the complete lisp network right you migrated two sites on the lisp but might be one site here who don't have the lisp capability so is it is it not going to communicate with the lisp right it is going to communicate so what is the role you just have to define you just have to in lisp space you just define the router this is the router again it is a part of the lisp domain but the router domain would be the pitr that is a proxy ingress tunnel router so it is going to build the again tunnels with this they are going to talk to this they are going to talk to this everyone is going to talk to this but this router is this router is purely can communicate the non list sites so this does not list database look up and encapsulation for non list site does the list database look up and encapsulation means they can act as a mediator if you having the non lib site and lib site and you want to communicate with each other so any list packet is going to come they can decapsulate and again they can communicate to the lib packet any packet coming from the non lib site and want to come to lib they can encapsulate and send to the lib site this is how it is going to happen so this is acting as a broker it is acting as a broker so this is the concept of the lib okay and this is the concept of the proxy ingress tunnel interface tunnel router that is it does the lisp database so this is all about the lisp if you go in the books so probably you can see here let me see what is written here vxlan and so you can see here so so the same thing aggregation issue traffic engineering multi homing routing stability right so cpu memory what are the same thing i just told that is going to you can see everything is written here and these are the all problems and uh, to just complete this problem so the same thing we having the itr routers we having the atr router we having the pitr router so non lips data center integrated pxtr that is again non lips you want to get the data center pitr again these are the all for pitr pitr these all are for non lips so here you will get the lot of definition endpoint identifier and endpoint that is ip address end with the lisp site lisp site this is the name where the lisp router and eid reside so this is the lisp site means you are just encapsulating the packet and you are just residing the eid ingress tunnel router the same that is encapsulating the packet egress that is decapsulating the packet tunnel external routers that refer as the itr or etr function vice versa because tunnel routers can be etr or itr so if you initiating the packet your role is itr 
but he is initiating the packet you receiving that your role be the etr so it could be any pitr that you can see here just like the itr but non lip side you want to connect similar proxy ptr etr just like the etr like similar to pitr so pitr is the ingress and it is the egress so just the vice versa if you encapsulating the packet that you are acting as the pitr if you decapsulating the packet you just acting as a etr and pxtr like proxy tr that is a refer to the perform the pitr and ptr both function if you want to do that that is known as the pxtr means you are you want to do the pitr function and ptr function that you known as a pxtr so probably every router having this role not this this because in production scenario we are not having the encapsulation or decapsulation role based router we just use the pxtr who just performing the pitr and ptr functionality so this is same thing they are routing rlock rlock is a routing locator is ipv4 or ipv6 at both is going to supportable and both are intercompatible to each other if any ipv6 is coming from the uh, you know uh lip side and you want to decapsulate encapsulate the ipv4 it can be also workable map server so this is the network device typically a router that learn the eid prefix mapping entries eitr and store them in the local eid to rlock mapping and database so this is the, your map server right so it's a brain where the routing is where brain where routing is going to be stored map resolver this is the network device typically a router receiver lists encapsulated packet and they decapsulate and they find where i have to go so server having the all database and the resolver so this could be the one router only functionality not two router but if you want to do the two different router you can do that also so that's why we having the ms and mr both all together but if you want to go different different router then you just go do the uh, that also one is just going to maintain a database and one is going to just resolve the packets right so these are the same thing what we just discuss and the headers so list operation we discuss how this is going to happen step by step i just explain and uh, i believe we are good to understand because nothing else we have to understand the packet the same format they are going to map and they're going to create and they're just going to build the communication okay so non lip side again they will go that pitr is going to responsible and they are going to communicate with the cisco.com this is how it is going to happen so every scenario that down they are talking about the vxlan the same thing vxlan we discuss about the headers we having the vni and uh, this is how the core network list and spine will find there and based on that they are going to tag and that very small they have given the you know description here and then the topic is going to be finished so this is all about the list and vxlan hope you understand these are all more theory but probably in next section you will get the more practical less theory because everything we have to do in the practical so we'll be enjoying the next sessions okay anything guys are we are good till now yeah we are good okay so we can wrap up the session for today okay and uh, we can connect next class okay raj you want to say something oh uh, no sorry it's all right thank you all right bye bye take care have a great evening vikas you got your username and password try it and check it and let me okay, know if okay. Anything. okay 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 sir. just call to avisex in case of any issue okay 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 thank okay. you thank you thank you okay thank you